from Telugu land or anybody from outside? Who doesn't know Telugu yet? Wow, such a beautiful crowd. So generally what happens is uh, many times we feel more comfortable with our mother tongue. And that too I have to announce in the first uh, interaction with you itself that I am a lover of Telugu, Telugu industry. So I think most of our classes will have uh, a lot of, I think that was a huge uh, emotional uh, decision that you must have taken. Not many of you back home must have encouraged uh, because people might be having in mind that uh, this is a very long drawn process and uh, the general orientation, general mindset of the people is that maybe it takes years of effort everyone and starting in 2018 and maybe perhaps by 2020, maybe if I don't know what, I will start. But I'll tell you something very interesting that has been happening off late. We see that uh, increasingly good number of uh, students are clearing the exam in the first attempt. That's a real encouragement for the people who would want to come with a small number of you know, years in hand and then would want to. Because you see with life being so very short, you don't have so much of time to spend on the preparation for the exam itself. So Long, all the things to do in the life. And if uh, uh, the exam stops the progress in the other aspects of your life, your personal, your mm -hmm. other aspects, that becomes a, a huge bone of contention. So bear in mind that uh, with several people being demonstrating in the recent past, uh, you will have to have a positive mindset that yes, it is really possible in the first attempt itself. But it doesn't mean that, you no, know, I would uh, do a two or three months of study, like how many of you are all engineers here? Engineering students, oh, huge numbers. Who, who are the others? I mean, who are, what are the others? Any doctors here? Medical, veterinary, whatever. That's a discouragement. And only one? No, no other doctor there? What, what about the other people? What did you study? BSc, BA. Anybody who studied anthropology? The graduation, not the graduation. Why are you here? What brought you to the class? That was a question supposed to be answered by you. What brought you here? The question is, are we, have we decided that we are going to do with this subject? Or are we here to see, okay, maybe I will try to understand what the subject gives and maybe based on that I will take a stand kind of a thing. Is it that? Sometimes what happens is, <clears throat> you go to buy something, some product, or you meet a person the first time. Many times in the first go itself, you feel comfortable. You think, okay, I like it. You go to purchase a shirt. You didn't have anything in mind, what color, etc. But you picked up one randomly, the first one. Many times, you know, you must have had this experience. Uh, you picked up something that you think that you think that you liked it. You think that you liked it. And after that, whatever you pick up, you really are, are not comfortable because you are coming back to the first one. That must have happened to your, you know, the so-called close friends also. You looked at her for the first time and then you said, okay, I would go with her. And then later you found several others. But then you think that the first one itself is better kind of a thing. Sometimes that happens to the subject house. You actually do not know. See, when uh, some people do this, you know, one after the other, several workshops and seminars, you keep on attending. Some people are champions in attending workshops. I see the same places in many places. 
across the years also. See, whatever subject that you plan to take, uh, first of all, you should have, I don't call it liking, but maybe you should have an intimate love with that subject. Unless otherwise you love this discipline, you really will not be able to you know, uh, go through the entire process. Because you see, most of us, most of us have not come from the so-called uh, you know, life uh, uh, social sciences background, or most of us are not from that particular subject background for which you plan to take for UPSC. That's the reason why I say it many times that which optional you take up is generally an accident. And sometimes accidents are fruitful, sometimes they are devastating. The same optional subject which must have done good for one may not be doing so good for the others. So we will not draw a particular line that see this is the best one, this is not the good one. See every subject has got its own chemistry. And uh, unless you establish a relation uh, through that chemical process, you will not be able to enjoy that, that, that subject. See, marks and scores and ranks are uh, kind of glittering things that were happening in the last uh, one week or so after the UPSC results. That must have once again made people uh, you know, to, to think you know, this is a better one. So many statistics, people are coming up with so many graphs and statistical analysis, so many appear, so many clear, you know, this is an average mark, etc., etc., kind of a thing. All those statistics does not, do not help that. First of all, you should give the heart to the subject. <clears throat> so when I was walking in, a student was actually asking, you know, for a comparison rather, which is a better one, this subject or the other one. I generally don't go by the comparisons. Comparisons actually are dangerous. Don't compare. Neither subjects nor the individuals nor friends. Don't compare. That, that's the reason why I say it all goes by your gut feeling. <coughs> you should have a gut feeling to pick up one subject because for most of us, when you talk about uh, any social science subject that you would want to take, uh, that goes at the end of the day by the gut, gut feeling. And that's the reason why I say this, that when uh, if somebody comes up saying that, see, I uh, have decided to take this subject, I would go all the way uh, in, in trying to help them out, uh, rather than saying that, see, do not take this particular one, take this kind of a thing. If that is the kind of a question, because when I take up the question, not the things, yeah. if that is one of the kind of a questions that you would want to say, see whether I should take this one or the other one, I wouldn't want to comment on such kind of questions. Secondly, <coughs> Even before we look at the syllabus and kind of things, um, the other day somebody was asking uh, what miracle happens with the subject. Why is it that so many people be able to clear the subject with, with this optional subject, etc.? Um, maybe I don't know about the others. When it comes to my students, I think uh, if you enjoy the subject, it would automatically mm -hmm. happen. Secondly, the way you the way you understand the subject, relating yourself to to the syllabus. What's your name? Vaishnavi. Did you see the syllabus? I mean, before coming here, anybody who had seen the syllabus of the subject before coming here? I mean, okay. <coughs> what attracted you? What's your name? Huh? Janavi. Okay. What attracted you? What you found interesting in the syllabus? <coughs> Any particular any particular topic at which you spent a minute? Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else who must have glanced through the syllabus and then you thought that okay, this seems to be interesting. Even before I seek an answer for that question, I must, uh, I must ask you this. 
uh, how long have you been with UPSC? When was your entry into UPSC world? When was that? You came yesterday, great. Most of us are, I think. Most of us, I think yesterday your class has started, so your first interaction with UPSC may be that, unless otherwise you have had some brothers or sisters in the, in the you know, at home or who are already into service or have been trying to clear the exam, kind of, most of us, I think. So I think with one day or less than 24 hours, I won't expect much from you. But then you see, <coughs> when we look at the syllabus of any subject for that matter, there would be a few things that might attract our attention. And rightly said by Jahanvi when she says that uh, the subject tries us to understand ourselves. It helps us understanding ourselves. Understanding in a very comprehensive way, you know, sociologically, culturally, biologically, from various parameters. Why I say this is many times, you know, understanding others becomes a challenge. But first of all, you'll have to understand what you are. When I say what we are, what you are, it means that we try to understand what we call, what we call the culture of the individuals. I think that's where I, I uh, briefly, that's where I actually introduced one word to you in your syllabus. This is actually a subject that tries to study what we call the culture of the individuals, understanding ourselves. In a way, I should say this, many times uh, we get puzzled why the other person is doing what he's doing. Many times we try to complain. I mean, others try to complain that, see, you don't understand us. Or we complain to others that you don't understand me. Many times it must have happened in your life, trying to understand the others or uh, we trying to understand the others and, and the vice versa becoming a big problem. The entire syllabus kept aside. I mean, if you glance through uh, the, the papers that you are having, I think your syllabus runs into three pages at least. When I type in a very small font, we try to do it intentionally so that the students are not intimidated by looking at the length of the syllabus. Because occasionally one of the reasons why students pick up any particular subject is maybe the syllabus looks to be very small. When it comes to the syllabus, it is not at all small. It runs into pages. If you look into the UPSC notification, putting up a scale there, physical scale, you try to measure each of the optional subjects. I bet this is going to be one of the longest ones in terms of the scales that you are measuring. So if at all that thing is there in your mind, that there's a small syllabus and hence I am picking up that, please. But yes, when it comes to understanding the simplicity, the freedom the subject gives, and the score-wise, I mean, the, as things pe people have demonstrated, it, it's fine. So my <coughs> Uh, intention today was to interact with you for the first time and with most of us being the f first timers here. Uh, I wanted you to introduce myself, number one, and secondly, to some extent, uh, the, the discipline also, so that you can take a better stand uh, on what to do in your future. Uh, that That's how, basically. And then maybe, perhaps, I would try to expose you to the last examination, 2017 main examination, and uh, uh, and tell you, you know, what kind of questions are generally asked, etc. Before all that is done, before all that is done, uh, I have to say something else also. You're all from uh, from uh, the English uh, way of teaching, or anybody from the regional language, studied in the regional language at some point of time in your school, no? All of your convent going people, no? one, one. which language, sir? Okay. 
so I can think that all of you are experts in English language. Grammar problems are not there, syntax errors are not there in writing, etc. How good are you in writing? I mean, you love your handwriting? You love your, how many of us love our own handwriting? Numbers, that's very important actually. Before we show our handwriting to the others, we should love. Or you understand your own handwriting, even if you don't love. No? You understand your own handwriting. That's very important. And uh, uh, so most of you have come out of the college very recently. Is it that? Huh? So you were writing in the college? I mean, you used to write notes in the college, in the classroom, or, uh, or no? I love to. I'm also an engineer, actually. I know what happens in engineering college. But here, when it comes to UPSC, it calls for reams of writing. You cannot shy away from writing. And especially when it comes to my classes, you are going to have a huge volume of writing. Uh, it may look to be an intimidating one in the first interaction itself when I'm saying this. But see, horrible, horrifying, terrifying things have to be said in the beginning itself, rather than very beautiful, comfortable, comforting things. First and foremost that uh, I look from a student is that uh, you should be giving your more than 100% of attendance, the attention there in the class, of course, attendance also. Secondly, writing becomes very, very crucial here that may be in the form of stories that we narrate in the class. I'm a good storyteller. See, there is a way in which uh, Indians teach when compared to the outsiders. I'll tell you why I'm, I'm giving this thing in the class today. Indians globally are the great teachers because we try to see to it that the other fellow who is listening to us ex understands what we are telling. Until and unless he says yes and he nods the head, we go on saying the same things again and again. That is the reason why in order to get out of all that repeated listening, many students, you know, they nod the head even before the teacher says something. And then uh, Indians are good at this, explaining things with so many narrations and stories. When it comes to anthropology, this is a subject that runs through various stories. And whenever we are narrating stories, it is not out of the syllabus, actually. Whatever narrations that we are giving, they, are also, they also have to be taken down religiously so that you know, they will be incorporated somewhere in your answers. No example, no movie or no AV that is shown to you, no pictures that are demonstrated to you are out of place at any point of time. Uh, I would uh, want to introduce something here that is myself. Including uh, whatever things that you are seeing nearby in that picture, though I look very funny out there, I am. One beautiful thing the discipline offers is that it is a living discipline. Unfortunately, when it comes to India, we don't have many people opting this particular subject. Thanks to UPSC for that. Unless otherwise UPSC was not there, I don't think people would have known what anthropology and why and how of it actually. I was comparing Indian and other teachers because of my very recent experience. Several teachers, several students like us, we were actually working in some of the islands of Australia recently, where we were actually seeing the teachers from different parts of the world when compared to India. We were actually trying to make it such a joyous learning when compared to the others, where self-learning is actually promoted. I think that is one of the cultural things we are going to explore in our discipline. 
it is not simply the indian culture for that matter culture of different communities that are living within india and outside so i think this is going to be a very beautiful journey for a student see keeping the exam aside knowing yourself knowing your culture and trying to understand the others cultures comparison see we are into a global world now when we are meeting people from different cultures not simply within india but across the world also when it comes it is becoming a globalized uh, in a global village as, as the popular term goes knowing our own culture how exactly indians are superior or otherwise to when compared to the others i think this discipline gives you facilitates that particular journey and second thing is i generally say this uh <clears throat> though it is too early for us to talk about this uh, i'm sure you know, mostly when we are into general studies learning a lot of pressure you know, people take a lot of pressure so many facts so many analysis election results and though i have cleared the election i won the election i'm not going to form a party others are actually and all that analysis and kind of thing. people are so very overburdened so many things you know the kings of the past the king makers of the present technology of the past emerging technologies or economics how things are changing and things like that so you are actually on your toes you are in, in, in that pressure cooker what i say is when we are there in anthropology class we are out of that pressure we open the lid of the pressure cooker keep it there lying let the broth get up by itself what i generally say to the students is that because i come from an entertainment uh, background my whole and sole objective will be to entertain the students and through entertainment if you are able to get few marks for your exam that is done and one other thing is that uh, as i could see most of the faces i know that we are meeting for the first time uh, meaning that we are strangers to each other but i think even strangers can smile at each other even strangers can smile at each other indians are very stingy at smiling to each other we don't smile at all as if we are if we are smiling at the other fellow the other fellow would loot our riches so first thing is that there should be the the dental line to be visible in the class there has to be some amount of smile there don't worry about the rest of the things you must be having so many other problems leave them outside that particular door when you are in you just enjoy the process generally you know i take class for not less than 3 hours uh, because coming from a movie field uh, that to telugu industry i don't like anything less than 3 hours and uh, and uh, i love that 100 days thing though these days movies are there not less than for a week or so every friday they change but i am an old timer 100 days and then 3 hours every day that should be the formula actually so the three hours uh, i actually give my heart to the student i understand how difficult it is to bear somebody continuously for three hours very difficult that to coming from uh, the uh, educational background where you hardly must have attended any classes in your college uh, even if you were attending a class maybe last bench was the preferred one last bench was always blocked you were forced occasionally to sit maybe last but one or two benches it was a hell a hell a lot of a problem for you to to yeah. to sit in those you always wish that there would be more of last benches rather than the earlier the first ones but then here i think uh, you are forced to sit in the class but i don't want that force to come in mm. the three hours when you are sitting here it's very difficult you know so from for me also having an attention of a crowd for three hours is very difficult 
that's why we try to do so many things. We give you songs, we give you, you know, movies, we give you some kind of a lecture. We do all kinds of a thing, all kinds of things. <coughs> Actually, my compilation is you know, still pending there. Uh, I, am, I am to come to a final conclusion of the songs of anthropology. Uh, because, you know, other other aspects are fine, and lectures, books, writing, notes, etc. All that is fine. But then, if I'm able to give the subject through songs, you, know, you are actually uh, singing a song about archaeology, and then uh, in that song you actually are learning what are the tools, and then what are the benefits, what are the applications, what are the drawbacks. It's each stranza is talking about one, the technique in one stranza, the positive in one stranza, the negative in one. So beautifully you are actually learning the subject, and I'm, I'm sure you would enjoy that, along with the music also. Some of us have this habit of uh, listening to uh, the music while studying. Focus ekku song midhantu, takku book midhantu. So uh, looking at that, you know, because your focus most of the time is on the song, if the song itself is coming from the discipline, I'm sure you would really enjoy that process, even while taking bath, while walking around, when people are actually busy. You know, th we think that, okay, they are listening to some kind of a lecture uh, or some kind of a news, but actually they are listening to songs there. So maybe you can play these songs, I think it would. <coughs> that was uh, one of the tribes that I was studying in the recent past, Yogambe tribe. I thought I would introduce in the first place to the two people, two tribes that I was working on. This was one man. His name was Bilin Bilin. That is that Yogambe man who was the last king of those tribes in, 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 in Australia when the British had uh, attacked and the British confiscated their lands. This is one beautiful tribe about which that I would be talking about and then I should actually say thanks to one of my friends there called uh, Madonna, not that Madonna, Madonna Thompson. She belongs to that particular tribe called Uyghurs and that is their traditional dance form. And we are going to also introduce several such dances in the class so that, uh, of course, you know, if you are willing, we can also provide you the dress as well. <laughs> and then uh, we can call people to decorate you, body painting and face painting, whatever part of your body you'd want to paint or pierce. Now, piercing also is, uh, is a fancy these days, irrespective of the part of the body you go on piercing and then kind of a thing. So whatever you want, free services will also be provided. Because once you are joining for a course, you should have all other attractions also. Anyway, sir. <clears throat> One of the subject matters of uh, the discipline of anthropology is how the so-called simple people, the so-called tribal people, uh, have been subject to several uh, discriminations, atrocities, suppressions, and oppressions. That's where, you know, these people, I have used them for a comparison with India. I found that uh, India gives so much of a freedom to talk and express. Though we say that our tribals have problems and then we are trying to sideline them, crush them, push them aside kind of things. we find that India has been a land where people are having a voice to, to, to come up with their views and their problems. In several other parts of the world, we see that they don't even know their history. At least we know our history. They don't know their history. Their, their history is eliminated. Just imagine somebody's history being eliminated. It's like you don't know your past. You're trying to know your past. And you are trying to trying to understand who your grandfather is or the the the, the, the ones of riksha is it becomes very difficult actually. Mm. So in the discipline, look at your syllabus now. Look at your syllabus, paper two. The last chapters there. Chapter eight. <coughs> I think that's there on your page number pages are not given I think page number four uh, you can see there 8.2 tribe and a nation state a comparative study of tribal communities in India and other countries 
for many of us, nation is something that is difficult to define. You are starting to read the newspapers, started to read the newspapers. Yesterday's Hindu, in the pullout, there is one lady social scientist uh, whose research methodologies are discussed there. She is the one who was, who was working on the concept of nation. She's the one who studied uh, highway workers in India, highway laborers, construction laborers, and how construction laborers are used to explain what a nation is. It's a very interesting thing. Maybe you can go back to yesterday's newspaper, you can. The bottom line is that on a regular basis in the class we will be discussing what is going on from the perspective of anthropology in the newspapers and across various journals so that your contemporariness with the discipline is maintained. So you must have come across people who have been, see I'm going back to the place where I have started in your class. Are you fine in the class, sir? With a good amount of understanding, good amount of command in the subject, will be able to score better when compared to the others. So many times, you know, questions seem to be rather very direct uh, off late. And of course, you know, one, two questions have started coming up, which challenge the direct uh, uh, no, questions. More than 90% of the questions generally go by the guess we are able to make up. Mm, and I always say this, it is not simply the question, you should also know the answer. Many times that happens. The moment you see the question paper, you are jumping with joy because you know that question. But when you come to start to write, the problem emerges because you don't know the answer. You knew that the question would come. That's where writing becomes very essential. Uh, <clears throat> generally, you know, what we try to do in the classes is that, now uh, once again, I mean, uh, before coming, somebody was calling and asking, should I come to the class and attend or should I take the online class, etc." cetera? Uh, I always say that that is the take of the student. Sometimes what happens is uh, in the physical presence of the teacher, you are more attentive rather than on the in front of a screen. Uh, if at all somebody is able to make it to the class and then try to do the course in the class, I think that is always uh, preferred when compared to you know, somebody who is not able to come from a distance. You, know, you, cannot, you cannot say much about it. You know because uh, you're staying far away, you, you have to go in through the online thing. Whether it is online or offline, the rules are same. The rules are simple. One is that, uh, I call it Panchashil actually, Panchashil of the class. In the class, we try to explain many things. Each and every uh, example that we try to give, concepts that we try to explain, that because my focus will always be on concept building because most of us are new to the subject. We don't know the subject, what anthropology is. Look at your syllabus, chapter one, paper one. Somebody read out. Meaning, scope, and development of anthropology. Meaning, the first statement uh, tries to explain to you what is the meaning of the subject, what exactly it deals with that. Many times what happens is students, uh, when, when you are starting any subject for that matter, you start chronologically going from chapter one onwards. And it is here that uh, I thoroughly discourage students. These are the kind of topics that we recommend to the student to do after the entire syllabus is done. You do not know what is there in the syllabus, and then you are trying to study in the first chapter itself, what is the scope of it, and what exactly anthropology offers, etc. Many times what we find is students who start studying with this particular chapter uh, end up not understanding anything. Uh, many times you try to look here and there, maybe you jump somewhere else. Instead of that, now there are particular ways of approaching the subject, which I think I would be doing a little while later. Uh, one, one basic golden rule is that you are not supposed to start from the first chapter 
when you are starting to study this subject. I wanted to give this because a student was asking, you know, oh, what is the sequence in which I'll have to study, etc. With the number one, you are never to start your syllabus. But where you would be starting is, uh, I'll, be, I'll be explaining in brief the syllabus to you, but then, once the entire syllabus is done, then it makes sense to begin to, to do, the, the, do the first one. Now, before I actually explain to you the syllabus, etc., look at the 2017 question paper that was circulated to you. It is uh, not to say that, uh, it is not to say that, uh, uh, <coughs> that you would be knowing the answers, etc. It is simply to show the kind of questions that are being asked with the number of marks that are there for each of those questions. Just have a look at that. Forget about the question, look at the marks. You have several tens there. See, I have to say this. Um, <clears throat> unless you have seen the question paper earlier, you may not be knowing this particular thing, that uh, if you look at those instructions in the top, in your paper you are supposed to answer about eight questions. There are two sections basically. In each of those two sections, the first question becomes compulsory. As you can see there in the rule number three, questions one and five are compulsory. Apart from those compulsory questions, you are supposed to answer two other questions. I mean, uh, uh, so you are supposed to answer uh, uh, two other questions there. So what you would be doing is, out of those eight questions, out of those eight questions, if you are removing these one and two, there will be a chance of uh, attempting one extra question from each of the from each of the sections. See, there was a time when uh, uh, one single question used to be there in, say, question number two here. Question number two here. There used to be a single question for whatever marks, you know, 50 marks, etc. But now, if you observe there, there are sub questions there. And in many of the questions, you see number 10. And then you have about 15 marks, many of them coming to 15 marks, etc. When this kind of a paper is there, uh, a student actually uh, should be able to communicate a good number of ideas and summaries in a short length of uh, the answer, that is, in a 10 marks or 15 marks. The same questions which used to come for a big length earlier now are coming for a short, small length. See, it might look to be very uh, over ambitious thing that in the first interaction itself, when I'm trying to show to you something like a question paper of the recent exam that looks to be something that is going overboard. But now, on a daily basis, on a regular basis, a student has to keep looking into the question so that, you know, if at all you have spent uh, three hours in the class on a particular day, from that three hours of class, am I able to answer any bit of question in the, in the syllabus or not? That should be, that should be the... So in the Panchashil, one of the things is that from the class, whatever notes that we would be giving, either in the form of dictation or in the form of you know, explanation, you should be taking up uh, the notes very religiously. There should not be any shortcut on that. Because of course, there is still time. You know, after uh, the preliminary exam, we would be beginning your classes on 7th of June, etc. But still there is time. In the meantime, you can uh, improve, you can work on the speed of your handwriting, and then maybe perhaps you can be ready by then. And uh, second thing is that uh, Testing is always uh, a critical thing. Many times you hear the people who have cleared the exam saying that you do the writing practice kind of a thing. 
what we generally do is uh, on a regular basis we make you write some kind of a uh, homeworks rather i would call it assignments or homeworks that's very important actually see we are trying to take you to something like a school environment there it's not simply that you're sitting in the class to listen to boring lectures trying to stop your sleep etc second very important thing is that we are trying to make you write in the class and the third thing is we are trying to give you a whole load of homeworks there so that you know you are practicing to write get them evaluated and then you would be taking the full length test all this forms part of your overall learning this is as far as how the classes go on um <clears throat> I would give a brief idea about the syllabus and keep looking into the charge, um, you know, the document that is given to you. Uh, any beginner would want to know what exactly, uh, how exactly is the syllabus organized. Uh, in the first paper, uh, generally from chapter one to chapter eight, we call it section one. And chapter nine to 12, we place in section two. Similarly, in paper two, we have chapter one to five. considered as section one and the later part as section two. The demarcation is not actually given in the syllabus, but then that is how it is followed. Of late questions from section one are coming in section two and vice versa. It is not simply that. Occasionally a question from paper two crops up in paper one and vice versa also. But then for a proper learning purpose, you must know the demarcation. See, throughout the journey of about uh, four months or so in which you are going to learn the course, we would try to explain to you what anthropology is. Every day you might be getting some kind of a new insight into what the subject is all about. But right now you understand uh, that maybe through anthropology we are trying to understand different cultures. I presume that you understand the word culture, though I know very well that you don't know what the meaning of culture. Because you look at chapter two, paper one. You have these terms being mentioned there, culture, civilization, society, etc. That's where we are actually going to tell you the meaning of culture. Right now you bear in mind that in anthropology we are trying to study the cultures, culture of yourself, culture of the others. This is one you keep in mind. With that understanding, if I'm looking at the division of the syllabus, the first part of your first paper, that is section one of the paper one, we call it general anthropology. We call it general anthropology. I think you use pen liberally. It's better you start using your pen. Otherwise what happens is that three hours movie you have seen and after that you don't know what it is. Even if it is a trivial fact, trivial information, it makes sense if you make a note. We call it general anthropology, the first part. We use the word general because the syllabus from elsewhere in the discipline is some way or the other is linked to the paper one or section one. So the entire syllabus in bits and pieces looks to be present in section one there. And then when you come to the other part, the second part of your paper one, we call it physical or biological anthropology. We use that name because a good lot of chapters there deal with the biological element of human. 
It's not that the entire thing is biological. A huge number of them. Coming to your paper two there, the first part of paper two, we call it Indian anthropology or Indian society. Indian anthropology or Indian society. This is generally whenever you pick up any subject for that matter, any discipline, any social science, we see that in the paper one, we, uh, we look at the general or world things, global things. When it comes to paper two, it may be you know, Indian thing. So the first uh, section in paper two, we call it uh, Indian anthropology or Indian society. And the later part, chapter six onwards, if you could read through the uh, titles there, we find it mostly tribal studies. So it is tribal anthropology. Let me say this here. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, <clears throat> a lot of uh, syllabus here, a lot of uh, writings in Indian anthropology have been focusing on tribal studies, have been focusing on tribal studies. So everywhere, wherever we go in the syllabus, we try to bring tribal examples. But you will have to bear in mind that anthropology is not simply about tribal. There are other things also. Interestingly, uh, now the students who are appearing at UPSC with the anthropology subject, uh, they are increasingly doing the other courses also, university courses and short-term online courses, etc. Trying to, you know, have opportunities being used in the future. A huge lot of opportunities are emerging in the defense forces and the other <laughs> things. We see that uh, a lot of uh, anthropological knowledge is being used. We are going to see that. Look at your syllabus, chapter 12, paper 1. In chapter 12, paper 1, we see the applications of this discipline in various things, such as you have sports, you have crime, forensics, or you have things like defense, etc., etc. So a huge lot of openings are there. Now let me say this, sir. People have two basic questions. I'll also give you time for your Q&A. Two basic questions people ask is, how much time I should give for the subject? Because based on that, you would plan your thing. Um, <clears throat> second question which uh, people come up with is, where from I should start my study in the in the, in the syllabus? I'll answer the first one first. You have something to say? Uh, before I say something, uh, generally, because of course your UPSC run had started only yesterday, so it looks to be a very uh, futuristic question rather. And nevertheless, uh, what is the target that you are fixing for yourself to be at your desk, working desk? Any particular number of hours or time that you are fixing to yourself to be at the desk, work desk, outside the class, not in the class. Maybe the same question I would be asking after a month when you start attending the classes and then you'd have to. The general thumb rule that we give to the student is suppose you are attending a class for a three hours. A three-hour desk work should be mandatorily there. See, everything cannot be calculated so very statistically, but then sometimes what might happen is what you have discussed in the class might take double the time than what you have spent in the class. Well, suppose I ask you to write an answer at home. A hundred-word answer might take it an hours for you, but it's okay. Because finally that the answer with that particular content and style has to come out. Then you see, so I'm, I'm trying to communicate to you at, uh, uh, here itself that uh, if I'm taking a class for three hours, back home a minimum three hours of desk work should be there. 
this, I'm trying to answer this question, how much time I should dedicate to the subject in order to complete the subject. See, completion can happen in two ways. Teacher completing for you and you completing the syllabus. And uh, both of us should be doing it together. Many students have this uh, orientation that first you finish, then I will start. If that is the case, it is going to be a dangerous one. So on a daily basis, if you are doing with the, with the classroom, so suppose I'm taking a three and a half to four months of course for you, you would be requiring maybe an additional one, one and a half month, you know, when com compared to what you're doing in the class. Because definitely there, is, there are going to be some loose ends, some assignments are pending, some tests are pending, some write-ups you haven't studied, etc. So four hours along with the class, and then maybe an additional month for your own totally self-study kind of a thing. So if that happens, meaning along with the class if it is happening, so it comes to about a five months of time. That's a decent time. Because you will also be doing general studies along with the, with the optional subject. This is the first one. Second thing is that uh, you have, uh, you know, from which topic I should be starting. I already gave you one clue that, see, you're not supposed to start with chapter one. Uh, as we go into the classes, we will be telling at different places in the class, but see, uh, you are supposed to study this one, you are supposed to uh, choose this question definitely if it comes in the exam, or you're not supposed to choose this particular question because there may be an imminent danger there, whatever could, reason it could be. Uh, the do's and don'ts have to be properly understood by you. So keeping in view that particular thing, uh, what I can say is that from whichever topic in the syllabus you would want to start, you can do that, except starting from chapter one. But then, whenever, from whichever point you are going to start in your syllabus, uh, there is bound to be an unknown thing occurring. There is bound to be an unknown thing occurring. So for example, uh, look at chapter six of paper two. that falls in the tribal anthropology. Somebody read the first statement there. What's that? Tribal situation, in tribal situation in India. Continue there. OK, go ahead, go ahead. Huh? OK, and? Okay. All the problems of the world are listed there. All the problems of the world listed there. So suppose you are starting with chapter six of paper two for that matter. You're starting with the word there, biogenetic variability of Indian tribes. So first of all, you would be knowing, or should be knowing, what a biogenetic variability is. How based on the variability, you know, Indian tribes are being studied, etc. So wherever I am starting for that matter, I would be having some link with somewhere else. Look at chapter two of paper two, which looks to be very cute, two line syllabus there. Don't go by the length of it. The shorter the syllabus is, the more dangerous it is. Demographic profile of Indian population and ethnic, linguistic elements in Indian population. So basically there is some kind of a commonality in the terminology there, ethnic or biogenetic variability kind of a thing. So what we will be doing in the class is wherever common things are there, irrespective of whether it is paper one, paper two, wherever it is, if common things are there, we would try to bring them together and do it. For example, much more simply if I am doing it, look at chapter 5 of paper 1. Chapter 5 of paper 1 deals with religion, theories of origin, forms of religion, etc., etc. So if I am doing religion in your class, I would do chapter 5 and look at paper 2. Paper 2, chapter 3. Towards the end of the chapter, you find 
impact of Buddhism, Jainism, etc. on Indian society. And look at chapter 8 of paper 2. Impact of other religions on Indian tribes. So what happens is, when I'm picking up one chapter, I should be, one content for that matter, I should be linking all these things and doing together. Similarly, look at chapter 1, paper 1, 1.6 and 1.8 rather. In 1.8 for that matter, if you go to 1.8, you find uh, something like, huh? prehistoric archaeology, dating methods, no? kind of things. We are going to spend a lot of time on dating methods in the class. And then you have several other things there. Archaeological ages are there, like you know, lithic ages, metal ages, etc., etc. Turn to paper 2, chapter 1, rather 1.2, etc. You find the same names there. Several lithic ages in India, metal ages in India, origin of civilizations in India, etc. So what happens is it makes sensible a sense when you are combining the syllabus from paper one and two and doing them together so that you would be able to give examples of paper two in paper one and vice versa. This is one of the things. Are you okay in the class? Comfortable? You understand my language? Yes or no? I'll give you my background now. <coughs> I was a B graduate, civil engineering, from Usman University. That was ages ago. I don't know when it was. In the archaeological age, I had done my <coughs> engineering. <coughs> then I was doing several things. I did my journalism for some time. I worked as a journalist in print media, electronic media, etc. I was a script writer for documentaries, screenplay writer for documentaries. That's the reason why I say I'm from the entertainment world. I really don't like if the student doesn't get entertained in the class. Because subject, anyway, you'll learn. Entertainment is important. Jokes are good, and subject are good. Subject, anyway, you'll learn later after the course is over. <coughs> uh, in the class, you'll have to enjoy the process, that's how it is. And then of course, uh, I also had studied a good lot of things in anthropology. I love this subject and hence, I had been doing a lot of field studies in India and uh, I wanted to do some really world-class study and I'm more than uh, elated, more than delighted and excited and anxious to give a whole lot of global examples with a personal touch for the upcoming batch. That's how I was telling this. If somebody had taken a course maybe a one year ago, the examples would definitely be outdated when compared to the recent ones. I always believe that teachers have to study. This is very important, actually. Teachers have to study first before you tell the students to study. You'll have to update your information and uh, I don't know, do the needful. That's, that's how it is. The upcoming course that you are going to have uh, I'm going to give uh, the whole lot of new things there. My idea is very clear. Every batch of students that are coming have to have some edge over who must have finished some time back. So I was there into this also. Recently I have finished one course in forensic anthropology because I love uh, skeletons and dead bodies and kind of things. So I have done one course in forensic anthropology. Right now, I'm doing one more Oxford course on social anthropology. So it actually is a, is a loving thing. That's where I understand that Indian teachers are way ahead when compared to uh, the, the, the foreign teachers. There we find that uh, he gives us uh, two, three books. He gives us some videos. He would ask us to read. He would ask us to watch the documentaries there and he would give us questions to answer. Whereas when it comes to India, right from the childhood, we are used to it. We are also given expected questions. <laughs> it is not simply the class that we take, expected questions. And then you remember in the childhood we used to do this, uh, we used to put brackets there. The question, this is the answer. You try to memorize this and try to reproduce that. Very horrible thing. 
That's where I differ. I want you to understand the concept first. So what we are going to do for you is, I would be starting with chapter 3 in paper 2. Chapter 3 in paper 2, that is Indian society. So many terms are there which I think you must have uh, come across in your life. Karma, you are going to talk about this in the first classes. Don't know how bad your karma was in the previous janma. You would be exposed to me here so that I can rip you apart and then make you suitable for the next janma. We are going to discuss the Indian society. That will be the first one. But alongside this, I would be giving a lot of stories of various thinkers. Because you see, any social science, for that matter, depends a lot on the thought. Suppose some of you must have looked at the syllabus of geography or political thought. Every social science has got its own thought. Look at yours, chapter 6, paper 1. Chapter 6, paper 1 that deals with anthropological theory. Generally what we do is for different batches we start with from different segments. Uh, and when we are doing that, definitely what has to be parallelly taught to you also varies. So here I am going to start for you with chapter 3 of paper 2 that is Indian society. But along with that, I'm going to introduce to you several thinkers, small, small narrations and stories there, so that when you are actually coming to do that particular chapter, you already know a lot about them in the various discussions that, that we will be doing. That's the basic scheme, actually. You ask me questions. You must be having hell a lot of them. No question is small, no question is unimportant. Anybody who did sociology in your graduation? Undergraduation? Sociology? Uh, geography? Good. What are the other subjects you studied? History and work. It's a BA. BA, okay. And? Geography, sociology, economics. You studied economics? Oh, good. Economics. So it is like a BCom or BA? BA in economics. Okay. Along with economics, what do you do? Political science and? History. Okay. Maybe a bit of history also I'll be using here. Sir, your questions, please. I've seen you before. Where? You were a student there, or you came to? Or you were a student. You came to see me now. Thank you. Old habits die hard. No questions. Your name? Generally, what happens is, uh, fortunately here, not many bio students are there. Not many medical graduates are there. Medical graduates have a problem with physical anthropology. If you are going through the syllabus there, 9.1 to 9.4 for that matter, methods of genetic studies and chromosome elaborations, etc., etc. I am telling you the general problem that will form an answer to your question. A student, if he thinks that he is an expert in them because he had come from some life sciences thing, there is a chance that he is not writing what is apt for this discipline. You are not supposed to go into very deep information about the subject there. 
the idea is whatever question that you take up in the in the syllabus what was the anthropologist doing in that particular topic that forms an important thing so the basic concept has to be understood but along with the basic concept there what was the work done by an anthropologist that has to be mentioned there so diagrams if you are drawing they are very uh, i should say more than simple rather one small kind of a chromosome kind of a thing in fact much more beautiful diagrams you should be drawing in 1.6 and 1.8 in paper 1 that's where i am going to entertain you thoroughly with the skulls beautiful skulls how to draw a skull so how to look at the others in order to draw a skull so those are the classes where uh, the neighbor will not object when you are glare gl you know looking at them uh, any other questions in the exam also if you want to draw a skull look at your neighbor and draw the, that will be much easier and waiting tell me Anybody else who met me earlier? This year, last year, this Janma, last Janma, four hundred years ago. Come up with a question. Tell me. <coughs> Options are there. To put it this way. teaching one subject itself becomes something like a task of trying to hold your own tail you will be trying to hold your tail and you are not getting to it so more than one optional subjects no i don't i believe that i should be doing justice to one rather than rendu ante rendu attend avadam anukunna enti But yeah, I love dealing with uh, things like international affairs, etc. That's a different thing. So you didn't ask a question whether you did GS also. <coughs> right now I'm in the class of anthropology, so I'm talking about anthropology. How sir? Learning to ask questions is very important. now that no subject has not started but then i remember one student was telling long time back that uh, i was wondering how others are asking doubts i'm trying to learn to ask doubts look at that so i think you have ample amount of time by the time we start our batch you know you can give it a thought but some people are there you know they are they keep attending more than one optional subject simultaneously thinking that uh, we would try to zero down on one that will never happen actually somehow somewhere you will have to use your own parameters to uh, say that okay i would go by this either you love the subject or you love the teacher or you love the institute or you love the timing whatever it is maybe you know many times what happens is for trivial unnecessary reasons we take a we take a decision that looks to be very illogical irrational one but it's okay no upsc you know trying to prepare for upsc itself is a very highly irrational decision that you have taken uh, i don't know whether this statement has to be publicized or not but so you try making up your mind and then when i see you on the seven you be ready with your pens and pencils and books so that you know you can start writing the basic idea is very simple sir if you are attending say 80 classes 800 pages of handwritten notes should be there on an average 10 pages you should write that is on a lesser side you know? 
In some classes, maybe you'll be writing 20, 25 pages also. In some classes, maybe at four or five pages, you may be writing. Average should come to about 10 to 12 pages. So 80 classes meaning not less than 800 pages of handwritten, handwritten notes, apart from the printed notes that I would be providing to you. Now people are thinking, and through this call, Odda, I prove it. And then second thing is, first of all, UPSC ke rawala Odda. In the kante vokate ro jayindi, fees gatle. So in the puru, alvatiya. This is not an easy thing, actually. Not an easy thing. Now you understand this. You have to give your heart, mind, body, soul, everything. Only then it will happen. Any other questions? I thought you would hold me for a long time, asking questions and answers and things like that. So from my side, let me tell you this. I would be starting with uh, chapter three and then uh, four and five in paper two, three, four and five. Alongside this, several other no, <coughs> sideline things will be there. One main storyline is this, sideline storyline will be going on, that's a different thing. And uh, three, four and five I would do. Then I would uh, take you to chapter six of paper one. So there it will be six and eight together. Six and eight together. Once you are doing this, three, four, five in paper two, and then six and eight in paper one, in terms of marks, more than 30% of marks you will be covering. So that comes to about 35% of marks. So the first one and a half month of your course, one and a half to you know, one month, 20 days of your course, that is going to be very crucial. Once we do that, we would jump on to the other ones. Like, you know, I would love to take you to archaeology after that. Uh, and uh, from archaeology segment, good number of questions come. Sometimes, you know, out of 500 marks, about 100, 110 marks come from archaeology itself. So that's a huge amount, you know, something that you cannot neglect, actually. So paper one and two put together, you would be doing a lot of archaeology there. That is the first three major segments. The rest of the ones would become a cakewalk once you do this. So tribal studies, etc. I'll be doing right from the beginning itself. You know, some stories of individual thinkers I will do. Parallelly, I would be doing tribal studies so that by the time you come to tribal anthropology, a lot of tribal societies across the world you will be finishing. That's how things are. Enjoy. Enjoy yourself. I think the classes have already started early morning, 6.30, so it's a very good one. For many of us, I think after ages you are getting up so early in the morning. Uh, I really appreciate the decision of the Institute. Have a good time, sir.